hot. Welcome to Rad World. Well, you're gonna have to ask the questions uh, on that side. Oh, I got. Oh, is that, is that what it is? <laughs> Today we got big O. You still go by Big O. You haven't grown out of that yet, have you? No, I mean not either way. You uh, call me. <laughs> you call me Big O. You were, you were like one of the people, kind of like Lunchbox. Yeah. That no one knew, or a lot of people didn't name. know their real name. Yeah. So, and then you hear, oh, you can remember that. It's like, damn, dude. Does, Big O's gotta have thought about this. He he pretty much made most of the Pantheon video. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. There's a lot of uh, Kyle Rich footage and Trace footage that I'd never seen. Yeah. Kill footage. All right, but maybe O's does this part. Probably. Yeah. The intro. Um, I put filmed by, and I put your name really big. That <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> was in my name. And other. Talk about the new one that you posted. No, the old one. The old, the, the original one. I was stoked. I mean, at that time, and really even now, I mean, I just want like the footage to go as far as be yeah, used or be right. seen, you know. And yeah. I'm probably the worst at actually getting paid for footage. Right. Holy crap! I've tried to get paid so many times, and just people are just like, whatever. How much money do you think you spent on tapes and cameras? <laughs> I have just shoe boxes and shoe boxes of tapes, DV tapes. Right. We didn't steal them. I mean, I bought most of them. Yeah. Rarely did we ever steal them. Uh, <laughs> The cameras, I kept, I kept stumbling on cameras. I, I never really actually bought a camera until VX2000. Uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, back in the day, it was my mom's VHS camera that I stole or, or my commandeered from my family. And then Brian Moore, it was his high eight that he was so good that yeah. I was filming him and it was right. his wide angle. And then uh, Ramsey hooked me up with VX1000 and I ran it over with my car. And then what? I, yeah, back over a VX one thousand one time. Was it yours or? It was one that Ramsey had come up on, and then yeah. I think he came up on another one, and then yeah. uh, I don't know. And then after that, it was like Robbie Brown out of VX two, and it just looked so good. Yeah. And uh, he showed it to me at Wild Edge, and I was just like, gotta go get one. And I was like, that was when I finally actually took my hard earned money yeah. and bought a camera. You didn't plan on kind of like wanting to film, start filming. Not really. You just kind of fell into it. I enjoyed it for right. sure. But the problems I kept running into all the time were like, uh, it just cost money to be out there. It cost money, like your camera would go down. You'd sweat all over your camera, yeah. you know, and then you're still just trying to make this perfect thing and it's just impossible to make this perfect thing. And yeah. no matter what you made, it's just never going to be like whatever. But as long as, you know, uh, we had a good time, and that's what we did. We just had uh, a good time. We were talking about that you took over Southside, and I was like, they're one of the best people to take it because, like, of all the time I knew that just from Trace and other people that you spent, and I know you didn't get paid for it, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. oh, and, true. And, and like back as, in that place, oh, and yeah. filming for Tommy and seeing yeah. this contest. And, and as you get older, like, you, I know the kids, they don't even know like what it's like to try to be an adult and then also spending your extra money like filming these things. Yeah, Probably. we'll see if they even make that transition in their lives when they get to that point where, yeah. oh, it's real lifetime now. Right. Now you just become like a weekend warrior. You know, are you gonna, are you still gonna film when you work full time? Right, it's You're still gonna like it's round up the homies and, yeah. and film your ass off? And I don't know. That's I don't right. know why I did it, it was just what I did. So I was an artist, you know, as a kid. You were? I was, oh, yeah. and I lend that ability to things, yeah. like, and just filming became my art, you know? It's just quick compositions, right. and editing is definitely an art form, so, like, it was just real fast, easy way for me to make a painting or whatever. If somebody has to do a hammer, or, or just do a great trick, or if we have to film this line, like, in this appropriate way, right. at this amazing spot, but that's all part of it, you know? But it is really just kind of an easier way for me to like make a nice drawing. Or yeah, you can take it to a next level. I mean, yeah. it's endless what you can do with it, that's right. for sure. As you've seen in these Ravel episodes, especially <laughs> graphically, right? Pushing buttons on the little color chart and seeing what this button does. It's sick though. It's yeah. cool. It's got its own, it's got an aesthetic <laughs> to it and I like it. Let's see, I started skating with my mom, brought on like a little blue banana board from a, a garage sale mm. and I, and I think I was seven, so that'd be like 83. Yeah. And then I didn't get a pro model until 86. I got a 
Pal Sword and Skull and oh, Kryptonics and Indies and Rib Nose Guard, Tail Guard, oh, Ribs. Oh, yeah, man. fully Sweet. dressed board. Yeah. That's pretty sick. There was no way to just like, I'm doing a brand. I'm just gonna launch this brand. Amazing. I mean, you're seeing it all the time. I mean, you got a lot of emerging brands that like are so small. Like we're trying to bring them into the shop, mm -hmm. and like these guys are just so small, they just don't even have product. But there's even more demand, just based on either who they are or their point of view or the products they've made. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty. It's a crazy time to be like a buyer for like a skate shop, like a core skate shop. But it's a great time too because we actually have options where we can attack things that aren't in the mall and people want things that aren't in the mall. Right. And there are things to buy that are sick and made well and are kind of like going back to what we wanted to be in skateboarding anyway. And that was one of my questions also, how you felt about maybe um, the Houston area or the Texas area becoming, becoming more um, independent from what they need as much or having more yeah. local support you know or supporting more local businesses i mean it'd be it'd be amazing if we could get that done you know, yeah. it's a, i mean i think a lot of people have a long road ahead of them and regarding like their brands and what they're trying to do with them but there's people who are very motivated to yeah. to go and do that i mean uh it's interesting like you know little brands are kind of popping up on the radar here and there yeah. and you check them out and you're like i'm totally down for that i'm going to support that you know and i'm going to bring it in because it's just these dudes are skaters you know yeah. they're, they're skateboarders and like their shit's tight and people want what's nowhere and, yeah. you know yeah. there's a lot it's happening in all kind of communities I, I feel like Houston's coming obviously super far we have like a downtown scene now a proper downtown scene now we have the largest skate park in the United States, for better or for worse, with their home laws and things like that. It's still there, and there's so many skate parks, and the skateboarding in Houston is really, you know, evolved a lot. Totally. Different. So yeah, and now I think like right behind that should probably be some sort of a local industry. We've always had, you know, like social distribution's always there and kind of filled that need. It yeah. gives us that feeling like we're part of an industry yeah. and we are. Many of yeah. our friends who worked there over the years, like our own brands and, and things like that, that, that'd be great. I mean, I'm doing a little bearing company for right. fun, you know? Yeah. That's American Blues, Yeah, right? American Blues. And we put a lot of money into it because there's no, there's no warehouse and there's no, um, there's no overhead, there's no staff, there's right. no, you know, it's, it's bearing. Bearing. I have a small little group of dudes that I think are cool yeah. that I want to give bearings to, but it's probably the best company you could do yeah. because as you know, running Pangea right. and instrumental at the same time, mm -hmm. like uh, breaking off boards every month. Yeah. And uh, you know, it was insane. Whereas bearings, like, you know, you give a dude a, like two sets of bearings and you might not hear anything for like three, four months. Right. The freaky part is like you're motivated to launch this thing and then you launch it and you get the ball rolling and then and then what the next step is like keeping it going uh, right on when you get on the other side not burnout yeah. phase but like right. it took so much to get to this point all right now it's happening and then yeah. now what do i do oh the company's gonna need more money it's yeah. gonna need stickers it's gonna need more inventory it's gonna Stuff need a new it. graphic it's gonna need whatever it is like coming up with the resources to create it again and not make a mistake and actually right. you know like captivate everyone's attention it's yeah. tricky you had instrumental going and i was like whoa dude he's actually doing it like someone because <laughs> like you always hear you would always hear people say yeah i'm gonna get some boards made i'm gonna start my own skateboard company now being older and know more about the industry it's not that big of a deal so like, yeah i don't think it's as hard as it as it was. As it was, yeah. yeah. But then but then like when I saw you you had your boards, I was like, whoa, he's actually doing it. And your graphics at the beginning were so simple, but I was just like and I th I think even one of them you kinda just had blank boards with a sticker or something. Yeah. And I was like, Whoa, dude, he's like he's selling them boards yeah. and like everyone wants them boards. Here and, here here's exactly how all that happened. Yeah. Ramsey and Janelle came to my house and they had some blank boards and they wanted to make a board company. Right. They, they oh, were really? asking. They're asking me about screen printing on them, I believe. Because you worked with. I was in screen printing yeah. at the time, and right. that's what I did for a living. And they were like, they wanted to put a graphic on it, yeah. and I'm, and it's like all oh, like, it's all like, uh, not concave, but like X cave and 
you know, you know, screen printing, dude. That's mm -hmm. not easy. I'm not sure how the hell you uh, you set something up here at the house for those Pangea boards, but that's super it hard, tight. Dude. It was really hard. Yeah, really so hard. at my job, we didn't really have the setup for that. I could only print in a certain area of it. So at first, it was like we were just gonna we just did stencils and then we did screens and we just like. Through, sprayed it like through like a house screen with a stencil axe. I remember that. I remember that. The stencil. Yeah, because Brad that. kick flipped yeah. straight into that bank yeah. on that instrumental board I, I gave him for some reason in the rain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know that bank on uh, over by San Felipe yeah. or whatever. Right, yeah, but that little yeah. too. Um, but like, it was like, that was just Ramsey. He wanted to do his board company. He didn't have graphics. I'm not sure okay, how so he became a partner or whatever. Or you were a partner. Huh? I guess I was a partner. I were mean, you making the boards or was Ramsey doing it? Because I thought Ramsey showed up. Stuff. Ramsey showed up with blank wood, and then I just got super into it. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then he was kind of wanting to be more of a team writer when things started started to get serious. Right. And I'm just like thinking, you know, oh, we could do something with this, like any entrepreneur would, right? right? Like, oh, we could take it to the next level, and. Um, and he, he helped me with like opening shops and f talking to people and dropping off boards and trying to collect or catching checks up front. And then um, after a while, we got kind of had all that kind of rolling and everything. But uh, it's tough because I don't know, it just grew. It just kept growing and growing and growing. And it was really just that price point, just that $40 board. Yeah. We didn't have pros, so there wasn't any reason to charge a pro model pricing. Yeah. So that's kind of. And I knew that was really all we had. We didn't have money for marketing. We didn't have pros. Why would you buy this board? Well, it's a, it's a pro equivalent deck. It's a seven ply hard rock maple deck, and uh, it's forty bucks instead of fifty at the time, or whatever. Right. And the shapes were decent, and we just did the best we could. But for a while, in just building the company up, we just did hand sprayed graphics through the screen. Then, like, I can't tell you how good we got at spraying backgrounds. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> with Krylon, <laughs> like cream, yellow, white, <laughs> for like our part series. Yeah. And uh, the team was really like involved with like the early days of like the art direction of it. And then eventually we just worked our way up to actually getting stuff made, printed on the boards from where we were getting the wood, right. you know? Yeah. And then uh, I talked to like our wood manufacturer because it's been the same as the Southside boards as forever, back, forever and ever and ever. I've been getting the same Still wood, right now. same wood, Evolved shapes, same wood. Yeah. Um, for like, I asked him, I was like, so how long have we been doing business like the other day? It was like over 12 years. Yeah. You had what, two instrumental videos, right? The one with Peter Ramadama. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had a Metro Modern video, we had, and we, at the same time I filmed Contemporary Movement. Right. And we had two videos at one time because like Metro Modern, yeah. I would just film everybody, you know? Like if someone was just skating and ripping or and doing something, Nate? anybody was doing anything, right. I was gonna film it. But you used to fake, film Nate quite a bit also. Nate Broussard? Right. Yeah, after like, I guess I kinda like, maybe honed my skills or, or Nate just really actually just needed footage, mm -hmm. you know? Like I would say the toy machine days, I was filming Nate. Yeah. Which one out of them videos was the funnest video you guys made? I think this latest one, man, the Southside yeah. anniversary. Oh, yeah, I had the most fun because uh, to film, I had to leave town. Right. Couldn't really be here. <laughs> and everything, it was like five, like it was comprised of like five trips, four trips. Oh, yeah. So cool. when you're on the road, we went to New Orleans, uh, Atlanta. We went to Albuquerque, El Paso. We did a, a couple, probably went to Austin a couple times. Yeah. Um, we went, then we had a big trip. We went to Costa Mesa, Santa Barbara, LA, oh, wow. Santa, San Francisco. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Only, yeah. Oh. We were put up everywhere we went. Everything was oh. cool. We rented a van for the Albuquerque, El Paso. We rented a van for yeah. California. How cool. Uh, that was good. It was really good. Super productive. And, uh, yeah, I think that one was the most fun because maybe I wasn't in the streets all the time. So yeah. thanks to Cody Landier for being in the streets 24 <laughs> seven with them because I just couldn't do that. So, um, how happy were you to get to talk to the one? Like, I was that pretty happy. happy. Yeah, I was really happy. It was, it was, I was, I was surprised. I was surprised to get favorite filmer. I was hoping for, you know, a favorite video. Uh, you know, I felt like we put our, put our, the most travel into it. And I felt like our, a lot of our team riders really came through. Right. And, uh, I mean, 
Then we had some like cameo appearances from like friends and that skated hard around us or on those trips. Um, so I felt like we kind of deserved or at least solid in the running for best uh, best video. But as far as favorite film ride, I didn't know that I was going to win that. I thought I was kind of kind of removed oh, yeah. from the scene yeah. for that. I mean, I have people that don't even know I skate, you know, in, in right. the shops. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you still, I skated yesterday. You, okay. you still yeah. skate? Yeah. Yeah. Or you yeah. skate probably more recently, right? Yeah, ever since I got these uh, FP insoles, <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> I skated six. I skated six times in a week. Whoa. I haven't really had a long time. Yeah. But um, this guy mentioned to me the other day, uh, this is dude Wolf, and he was like talking about how like this is probably the first generation of dads that are actually skating with their kids. Not like, hey, let me see your board, yeah. like fully ollieing or you know whatever, just skating with them. You know, just really being able to skate with their kids, it's kind of interesting. Glad I'm glad we're a part of it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's the coolest thing about having Southside? Mm, being able to make a change in people's lives, like being able to affect like the young up and coming artists in a positive way. Being able to like let them like I understand how to make things and create things and like but sometimes it can't always be my point of view and so when I see someone with a really strong point of view like just trying to like let them in, but they don't know how to like bring it to the surface mm -hmm. for everyone you know just trying to identify like who's doing what and let them know just how powerful they can they can be but right. they don't they're not they don't know it yet they're only 17 yeah, 20 they no, not even that. They haven't lived long enough to understand, like, like me now. Like you're asking me about all this stuff I did when I was really young, and uh, people just watch it or whatever because it's a, it's a tangible, consumable thing that they can view and reminisce about, like you know, Houston skateboarding and things like that. Um, but at the time, I, I didn't understand it, but I understand it now, and so I try to help people maximize those times, their free time. They have so much free time, and <laughs> they think their lives are their lives are very complicated. And but I try to just help them focus on what they can do and what they're capable of. You know, there are all these things that you know these, these kids are only like 18 now, but they're emerging like artists and powerhouses of creation, and they're the voice of Houston. You know now and, and soon they'll be a lot stronger right. and so i'm just trying to just try to inspire them and let them know like that they're that we're listening people are listening people are going to be listening to you for a long time it just depends on how much what you do with what you have and what you what you're how productive are you going to be right. with this free time that you think is like a so strap yeah. you know what i mean so i just try to i think that's my the, the most fun part of south side is engaging these dudes answering their questions and telling them what I really think usually. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff I can't say, yeah. not to them, but just about all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But um, I'm just trying to be positive. I just try to be positive and, 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 and help them realize that they have an opportunity, you know, yeah. to, to tell a story or whatever they're trying to do. So there's only so many filmers to go around and, it's, and I feel sorry for that sometimes, you know? Yeah, uh, sometimes I, I, I think that, the, man, there's a lot of kids filming stuff, but then if you really think about it, who actually is going through with the stuff and putting it on something, a right. platform for other people to see, it's very little of the people. Yeah. It takes major time putting through um, footage, you know? Yeah, you know? this is probably going to take a while to go through, like, our conversation. Oh, yeah. Southside's always been a place where, like, skateboarders have been allowed to be the skateboarders that they are. Uh, it's just been that way for 21 years. Uh, and like making sure that like that continues was like my goal, mm -hmm. but like turning Southside into what I always thought it was, because that's what I thought it was, yeah. was my goal too, right. you know what I mean? So, I don't know, I mean the hardest part about running Southside is just holding the line between right and wrong, and like yeah. who's in the back, who's behind the counter, why are you up on the counter? You're not such and such homie, you know, you, mm -hmm. who, who are you guys? Yeah. And then, but also recognizing like the new emerging generations that well maybe maybe they have earned it you know what i'm saying yeah. and like giving credit where credit is due and being the keeper of the book you know of like who's who who has access to this this and this who skates for nothing who skates for 10 who skates for five like who never renews their membership yeah. who are we just stoked to see you know what i mean like just things it's just it's 
it's complex and that's why like we can't hire anybody you know like you have to you, to work there you have to pretty much just be there right and you just become like a part of it it's a living breathing thing like i just became a part of it yeah. dude i really am just the steward of the park right now right. you know hopefully someone else will take it over after me i don't know yeah. you know what i'm saying so the hardest thing about running south side is just like not ruffling feathers and letting skateboarders be themselves and, and do their thing and but like keeping in mind that there's some very real financial responsibilities and ramifications for myself and my family if I don't do what needs to be done. Yeah. And so that's very tricky for me. The thing about skateboarding is so rough is like we're all gonna know each other for the rest of our lives. Yeah. That's, that's what people need to realize. So like when you have like a confrontation with somebody or you say something that you really wanna say, no. maybe you shouldn't say that. Right. You know, cause because like I'm gonna, apparently I'm gonna know Tony for the next 20 years. Like, yeah, I'm gonna know Tony really, for really ever out. from skateboarding <laughs> at the skate park, you know? Like, so yeah. luckily back in the instrumental Pangea days, I didn't like be like, hey man, you using the same board as me, dude. Like, what's that about, you know, and all that. I have a Pangea board. I have, uh, I have, the, I have one. one, it's, yeah, did you give it to me? Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you get to I did, I think I gave you one, uh, Whenever like you gave me some footage for that thing. Okay, you know, okay, like, okay. Yeah, I still have it. Yeah, I still have it. That's the one. Yeah, I still yeah. have it. That was like such a interesting. I'll touch on that for a second, but like, cause you you kind of like opened the doors and the open the paveway for me to see like yeah it's possible even with, with your spray painting graphics and I do remember the uh, window screen graphic yeah because you threw me off for years <laughs> what about what cues what is you <laughs> threw me off for years about what a silk screen was and, oh shit. And, and I was like fuck dude I know I've heard silk screen before I, I say silk screen, silk screen. <laughs> on skateboards i've seen pictures of that and i was like that was like I, that, that was the lack of communication folks like because there was no internet for you we couldn't communicate exactly. you know, unless we were and we weren't on a, <laughs> we didn't have numbers we didn't know each other's numbers i really thought for like several years after i seen that graphic i was like i gotta figure out how he does that <laughs> with, with the, i gotta go buy some uh, window screen and put it on the screen <laughs> to try to preserve the stencil knowing the cry line would just eat up this uh, uh, i swear to god that was something for real that i thought for the years too what sets apart south side and your shops image maybe compared to um other shops around and um, just just the history, yeah. just the history of the of the skate park. Super deep history. Right? Yeah, it has a really deep running history. Um, the shop out here in Sugarland is, is the kids. It's it's right. it's our customers. Right. You know, they the ones that have decided like that's their shop, and mm -hmm. the, and again like I've allowed them to create through the shop or back them on their ideas. Right. They feel like they have a piece of it, you know, and. They, they want to be a part of skateboarding, you know? This is their like first job in skateboarding, mm -hmm. you know? Or whatever, their first art show or their first graphic that they did or first yeah. idea that yeah. we yeah. made shirts of. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. things like that. Like Rich's, yeah. that Sugarland shirt is Rich's idea. Yeah, he told me that, man. And then the Chase Walker series just came out. We sold like six full sets of oh, that yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. That's pretty nuts. Yeah. You know, that's a six board set. And uh, everyone just likes that Houston uh, photo he shot. Mm -hmm. And then, um, what are some other ideas? Patrick Woodling and Yash Naik's uh, like photo show that we've done the last two I years. That, right? This fall, uh, um, Greer, Greer Rudin's on board to do a photo show there. Uh, uh, just because I was like, this could happen more than once a year. Let's go twice a year park, so. at, at the Sugarland oh, store. Oh, for real? Yeah, so it's like a hub to like, you know, try to stoke people out you know like let them know like hey man someone's listening or you've got a voice like let's make right. let's make it yeah you know, what I mean? you know let's see how it does you know yeah. and you can see how your idea performs you know what i mean like to people who don't know you you know like and uh but the skate park itself is just what sets us apart so we have an indoor skate park right. and a shop i mean we are it's just a really as cool, about as core as it gets, man. I mean, especially lately with like the death of like mainstream streetwear brands and you know skateboarding going back to skateboarding, which is a lot easier for me 
to go do, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Our voices, dude. Us as a creative collective, myself and whoever's in the mix and whoever I'm collabing with or working with or, you know, right. like the, the, the team guys, you know, like just who we believe in and who we're backing. And yeah. I mean, I want to expand it, but it's like, it's just my, you know, you know the prices and, and I have the best team guys. Like our team guys really ask me for almost nothing. Uh, you know, so who, who is on your team? Who's the official team? Friday's official team is like it's eight guys. It's uh, it's like David. He's the long time. He's the only guy from Tommy days. And then um, Dakota. Who is on the Southside team? Uh, Southside team right now is uh, David Langston, Dakota Robertson, uh, George Carbones. Tate Malpass, Ben Rayborn, Technical. Did you remember that girl Lori that had the half pipe yep. in the backyard? Yeah. I remember seeing him over there a few times uh, when he was all like super punk rock and a young kid. Right. And, and like, he was doing these amazing, like, weird tricks, like all these. Um, old school variation, variations, and able you know, to revert it like how yeah. he wants. And I was like, yeah, and that style really wasn't like very popular. It wasn't resurged, yeah, uh, right. revived back then yet. And I was wondering like, if he maybe revived it himself. He thinks so. Could be, man. That'd be weird, right? If he's the reviver. He's the root of it all. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. That's pretty nuts when you like make skateboarding be more like your skateboarding. That's nuts. Yeah, you got that much of an influence, your style is that like noticeable. Different. And then you got Derek Simon and Chris Laring. Oh, yeah. And he recently got pro so. Yeah. So you yeah. guys got a pain now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't talk about it. 